Well, welcome back. I just had um, my follow-up after having a Holter. I had the Holter monitor 24 hours in June. I had two other appointments that they canceled. Um, they had things come up. The doctor was sick, had to cover for whatever. So here I am three months later and I got the results, which is fine. I'm just glad to have all this medical care available to me. Um, and the meeting overall was good. It was uh, good news. First and foremost is they're actually not PVCs. So I use the Cardia Mobile. It's like a little at-home EKG, just a two lead. So it's not super accurate, but it'll come up with what it thinks you have. You know, it'll say AFib, um, you know, normal sinus rhythm, whatever. Mine always came up that I had PVCs. <clears throat> and my last appointment, I remember saying PVCs and they didn't, neither cardiologist uh, corrected me, but they called them PACs. I'm just like, eh, they must have just misspoke or whatever. PACs must be more common. But she said, no, no, they're, they're PACs. And my other cardiologist said, who's an EP, um, an electrophysiologist said the same thing. He's like, no, you're not having PVCs, you're having PACs because they can obviously read the EKG, which I cannot or don't know how. And, um, you know, they both said like, oh yeah, those cardio modules are awesome, but they don't always read it right. So that's first and foremost. So I'll probably have to change these video names to, you know, living with uh, PVCs slash PACs or something like that, or maybe just PACs. Um, but like I said, the appointment went well. My burden rate is 14% of my total. Heartbeats are PACs. It's uh, just under 10,000. Sorry, that's, that's my daughter. She's playing over there, so. So yeah, just under 10,000 in that 24 hour <clears throat> time frame, And I feel like that day was, was relatively normal. I didn't work out that day, if I remember correctly. So they actually might've been a little higher than normal. So we'll go between that eight and 10,000 range. Um, the other good news part of it was she said, um, this is the VA cardiologist. She is not the EP. My outside doctor is the EP. Um, she said there's no like runs of PACs. Um, they're all kind of isolated, like just one, you know, then my heart will beat two or three times. And another one, I don't have like five or six or like 30 second run of these PACs, which she said is good. Um, the other thing, and she, she didn't point this out. I had actually asked, I said, when am I having them? You know, what's, what's the frequency? Like, is there, do I have more during the day? And I'll be right with you. <laughs> She looked at the timer and she said, you're not having them at night. When do you fall asleep? And, you know, I said, nine, between 9.30 and 10, and I'm up by 6.37. She said, there's no PACs during that time. So I don't know what that means. I did ask, I said, you know, does that mean it's more likely to be anxiety? And she was very hesitant. She's like, well, normally people with anxiety don't get as many as you are. Um, she didn't rule it out completely. But to me, from other stuff I've read and other people's experiences, if I'm sleeping, right, my brain is turned off and I'm not getting it. To me, that says it's something with anxiety or something else like that. So um, I took that as good news. You know, if I'm not getting getting them all the time, that, that means there might be a trigger where I can, I can stop these things um, without either medication or an ablation surgery. Um, she did give me a lot of a reassurance, which I thought was awesome part of that. She said, listen, I, I, it seems like you're getting, it's a lot, but there's people with a lot more. You know, a lot of you out there might be getting, there was somebody recently I read was getting basically 50% of their heartbeats were PACs and they had to have the ablation or else, it, you know, it's very unhealthy. So uh, I definitely feel for those people. Um, but yeah, she said, even though you're getting a lot, they're harmless, especially with you're not getting the super ventricle tachycardia. I could be misbearing, but anyway, those like runs or where you're getting a fast heart rate, stuff like that. She said, that is good news. And she said the same thing. She's like, I'm not, she says, I'm not an EP, but if they're not really bothering you too much, like you're not getting chest pain, stuff like that, then, you know, ablation should, it would be an elective for you. You know, it's not something that they would necessarily recommend, but she reiterated, you know, talk with the EP, um, the other cardiologist I see on the outside, because the VA does not have an EP. <clears throat> um... So yeah, I, I thought the meeting was pretty good. I have, will have follow-ups with them every six months. And um, she said through, through them, you know, she can write the referral for my outside doctor if I decide to go with the ablation. Um, so that, that's awesome too, because that'll mean it'll cost a little bit less for me if the, if the VA can 
we'll cover some of it, but we'll get to that. I, I really don't want to go the ablation route if you've watched my other videos. Um, you know, a couple of years of the same thing and it's really bothersome, then I will. Right now, as I've said before, it only bothers someone at rest. I'm sitting here like this, but I'm talking, so I don't really see him. Or like when I'm going about to go to bed. If I'm up, if I'm active, um, if I follow my routine that you would have seen in the other video, and there's a couple other things I'm going to go over. If I do those, I still get them quite frequently, right? Every like 15 seconds, 10 to 15. But, you know, they, they don't hamper my life um, enough that I would take a you know want to do a surgery for you know it's something that I could live with um so yeah just to finish it out there's the other couple of things I'm going to add to my routine I'll keep that routine which the past like two weeks has kind of hasn't been doing as much I'm back down to like every five beats I'm getting them but that could be because I'm going back to work soon um you know different things in life I don't feel anxious by any means like I've said um I feel perfectly normal very chill very, very mellow but it could all be subconscious stuff because like i've said in the other videos this started right after literally two days after my daughter was born right so on a crazy sleep schedule we have this whole new responsibility which is awesome but maybe that is is what's causing it i'm worried about her i'm worried about my own health who knows so the things i'm gonna i'm gonna continue my own routine get a little off track there but i'm gonna run or jog or bike those are the things i do for my works out but i've only been doing that like 15 20 minutes a day i'm gonna up it to 25 to 30 minutes so today right after the appointment i went i jogged 25 minutes and <clears throat> I, I felt like i'm still getting them i can definitely feel them but I, i'm feeling feeling better heart wise today <clears throat> and the other thing for the vagus nerve thing that i've been um doing like that when i do the ice water for my face i'm also going to do I'll take a shower that's relatively warm, maybe like, you know, when you first get in, I'll do my wash and stuff like that. But then once I'm done washing, I'm going to turn into like super cold, as cold as I can. Do that for maybe 30 seconds. Because um, that, that'll help supposedly with your vagus nerve, which is something I could do. And as, as I've said in other videos, um, I'll probably see a therapist, just somebody to talk to. You know, like I said, I don't feel anxious i don't feel nervous any of that stuff i'm definitely not depressed um but do do that route maybe just getting it out there talking about health anxiety whatever maybe that'll help and then lastly uh not lastly because i'm sure i'll get other ideas but you could see a chiropractor for your vagus nerve i don't have back problems but that's something that they can address and the other two things are i'm gonna try magnesium glycinate i've tried the other magnesiums with no help but i'll try this one for I usually try them for a month if they make if the difference great if not whatever um, doesn't hurt and then also uh melatonin just i've heard that for your sleep you can kind of get like a better sleep using that um so we'll go for them from there and i asked my primary care physician they're like yeah if you feel like they're going to help you take them I mean, they don't really care but it's good to check with them i guess either way and <clears throat> i guess that's it um yeah, i don't think there's any other updates i'll do another one if my routine changes or if something works out for me um i did mention my sleep test last time at sleep i had the results from that too that's i don't have sleep apnea or anything they're gonna just put me in for next time i have my blood work which is next month to do um test your thyroid and uh the doctor the sleep doctor again was awesome he said if the thyroid looks good you know it's up to you, but we can bring you in for an in-person sleep thing. Um, but I'm also going to, um, the metaprolol could also be causing that sleepiness, so we'll see. But I'll do another video on that. Anyway, yeah, good, good, uh, good appointment. Took a while to get those results, but I'm, I'm very relieved um, to know some of that information. Even though it is a lot, around 10,000, um, it was overall is good news. So I hope everyone has a good day. Thanks for watching. Make sure if you comment, if you want to uh, talk about it, it helps me as much as it helps you. And um, if you're looking for other channels too, Steve Spears, I just want to point him out, is um, the first one that I kind of watched and then went to York, Cardi York, York Cardiology. I always have trouble saying that. But those are all the other good channels too if you're looking for PVC or P PAC um, communities. So hope you have a great day.